Hey, what's up guys? I know it's a little dark, but I wanted to pop on here real quick and clarify a topic that I posted about earlier today. I know, I've know i noticed that sometimes when I post things about like uh, not changing who I am in order to appease other people or you know not molding myself, becoming a chameleon to get people to like me, quote unquote. Sometimes I notice there's some confusion around what I mean there. So I just want to clarify and I actually think this is a helpful topic to just bring up. Um, it's something that comes up in my coaching a lot and what I've noticed is that I think so many, so many people, what I find, and I can relate because I was this way for most of my life, but so many people, there's a void in self-confidence and self-image um, and self-esteem. And so what happens in order to fill that void is we try to fill that void with other people by being what we think that they want us to be. And that is the most exhausting place to live in the world. So my first question, I guess I'll throw out there just to get you thinking if you're listening to this is like, do you find yourself never doing a good enough job, right? And who are you trying to prove that you're doing a good enough job in what area to, right? And at the end of the day, we do that to prove to ourselves, right? But what happens instead of being able to have that internal conversation with ourselves of, hey, you, you doing a good job in that area or hey you it's okay that you're not perfect you're working on that what we do is we try to prove to everybody else that we are what we are beautiful or we are successful or we are you know kind or we are a good person and we're trying to earn that card and seeking validation through other people and what I wanted to clarify is when I share that I refuse to do that anymore um, because I played that game for a long period of my life what I mean when I say when other people tell me how to be, I don't care. I don't mean that I just never take feedback from anybody and I just, whatever I think, it's my way or the highway and this is how it is. That's not what I'm saying. And that's what I want to clarify. What I do is I run it through my filter of truth is what I call it. So if somebody says, hey Tara, uh, when you are like this, I feel blah, 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 or hey Tara, you should never say blah, 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 or hey Tara, when you say this, it's offensive, right? What I, I run that through, okay? It's a filtering process, and that's what I wanted to share, and I, I have found that to be very helpful. It's like, take the guard down, take it in for a second, run it through the filter. It's like, okay, can I put my ego down, and can I feel truth in what they're saying, right? Let me take that in for a second. Let me run it through this filter, and if I do, I'm like, Hey, thank you for having the balls to tell me that. <laughs> Damn, that is, that is super true. Got it. And that that's just healthy feedback. That's a healthy process of taking feedback. So sometimes, yes, I always welcome that, right? But there's other times, there's other times where it's people, there's a lot of programming in society of shoulds. You should be fill in the blank. And when somebody comes at me with that, you should be like this, you should talk like this, you should think like this, whatever. As soon as I get that energy, I'm kind of like, okay, okay, let me just, maybe that was told to me in a way that wasn't super optimal, but let me run it through anyway. And if it feels like bullshit to me, then it feels like bullshit to me in a short period. And that's when I know it's a projection of somebody else's reality. And I'm bringing this up, I'm taking the time to make this live because I have seen this, it is rampant in our society and I don't know when it started and I don't know what the roots are, but there's a collective feeling of I need to be in such a way in all these different areas of my life that other people like me or approve of me. And I will spin my wheels and I'll run myself into the ground proving that I am that. But guess what? If that's the place you're in, where you're using other people to validate yourself, you're using societal expectations to validate yourself, okay, let's say you do it. Let's say you get real successful, you get real fit, or you get real whatever, <laughs> and then at some point you're not that. Then what happens? Then you crumble, then you freaking crumble. And this is what I meant earlier today, if you guys saw my post about me talking about people on social media, social media influencers. I know a lot of social media influencers, and I have seen people that I know well crumble under the pressure. And I know why. I know why. Because deeply energetically, they have been trying to be what they think other people want them to be. And that shit is exhausting. And you'll never, ever, 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 ever be what everybody likes. You know? And so I was using social media influencers as an example. 
because I've seen people have to get off social media, take breaks from social media. You know, they like can't handle it anymore. And I'm like, I don't feel like that. Right. And I was talking to my friend, Lindsay Matthews, trainer, Lindsay. She's like, I don't feel like that either. And I, and I know why, because we're just us. I'm just me. So I'm never going to get exhausted being me. You know, and I, I, I will say sometimes, yes, when I'm on bigger podcasts and stuff, I've had to learn to just not even read the comments because it's just like, I don't feel like hearing everybody's freaking opinion of me, right? Like, it's just exhausting. But for the most part, like, it, I don't have a problem being on social because I'm always me. And I really, truly feel that this is why, I'm sorry, introverts, you guys can call me. I, I will take the feedback. You can call me if you think this is bullshit and I'm off. But I feel like a lot of introverts really struggle with, this is just an observation I've made. And the reason they get drained around other people is because they got this second conversation going in their head all the time of what everybody's thinking of them. And they're, they're actually judging other people and they're worried everybody else is judging them. And that shit's exhausting. The extroverted people I know, you know why they're not drained when they're around other people? Because they're not thinking about themselves. <laughs> They just be, they're just neutral. They're just being them and just genuinely curious about everybody else around them. That's not exhausting to just be you. It's not exhausting to just be you. So just want to share that and clarify that, that like when I say that I, you know, I don't care if people are going to tell me that I shouldn't talk about mandates, that I shouldn't talk about religion, that I shouldn't talk about these polarizing topics. I'm like, I'm just going to be me, you know, I'm not going to hide who I am or how I feel in order to please other people, right? And if I'm getting a lot of feedback though, and people are like, wow, I really hate this. I'm like, okay, let me take a look at that. Do I need to look, look at something here? Let me take a look. And if I truly am like, no dude, that doesn't, I'm running through my filter truth and it, I feel totally aligned with how I'm showing up. That's all that matters at the end of the day. And that's why I'm sharing that because I don't know, a friend of mine was messaging me about um, comparison. You know, I know comparison is a big thing for people. And I, I'm sure I probably do it in some ways that I don't realize I'm doing it. But for the most part, I don't lean into that energy. I don't think it was modeled to me by my parents. I'm not, when I see people successful in any way, in any area of their life, I'm truly happy for them, you know? Or when somebody's really struggling, I'm not like, whoop, yeah, you got it better than them. Like, I don't play that game, you know? Um, and I think that part of that is because of the relationship that I've built with myself, right? So all of this stuff, like comparison and, um, you know, being a chameleon, trying to prove your value, you know, all of this comes from a lack of a healthy relationship with oneself, right? And this didn't come for free. This did not come for, I used to have a terrible relationship. I didn't even, I don't even think I had a relationship with myself, <laughs> you know, in my past life, I like to call it before my huge kind of wake up health and life transformation and it's come through I don't know thousands thousands of hours of meditation soul work investing in coaches you know reading uh, courses all, everything that I can get to work on my relationship with myself and now it you know after a while it kind of becomes a self-practice still invest in that and so if you're feeling any of these feelings of like not good enough, not good enough. Those all, all in, in any way that roots in a poor relationship with oneself. And that's why I love inner child work. Because if you think of a little kid that is hurting in the way you're hurting, standing in front of you and you tell them the shit that you say to yourself in your low moments, like, oh yeah, you are fat. Oh yeah, you're, you don't have your shit together. You're a freaking mess look at you. You're not as successful as that guy. Like, would you say that to a little kid? No, you would not. Right. So I find that practice very helpful, right. To give somebody, someone a physical thing to latch onto. So in any, in any way, like all of this stuff that I'm talking about of just being able to be authentically you comes from how you treat yourself, how you talk to yourself. That's it. And once you build that relationship with yourself, you don't need, you don't go into pleasing behaviors and relationships. You don't seek validation from outside sources. You don't put expectations on people. You're able to speak your truth. You're able to show up authentically you when you have a solid relationship with yourself. And until you have that, you cannot be authentically you. You will always be a chameleon. You will always be in the 
this anxious expectation energy of do people like me? Do people like me? Because I don't know if I fully like me. Okay, the real raw truth is, well, we got a we got a cop doing the little thingy on the highway in front of me here, so <laughs> I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna be looking right here for a second. Um, but you know, if you if you are seeking validation in any area of your life or if something is cutting you hard right like you've noticed like that one thing it really cuts it's because you don't like that about yourself in story period and that it's like let those triggers let those triggers be teachers you know it's like okay what's going on inside of me you know and it, it honestly a huge part of healing this is self-talk yes i re really recommend therapists coaches you know, things like that. But if you can at least start with, I like Dr. Amen's um, approach of killing ants, killing automatic negative thoughts, right? So if you look in the mirror and you say something nasty to yourself, something mean to yourself, something that cuts you down, or you look at your bank account and you say something mean to yourself that cuts you down, right? Or you're in a social situation and you don't feel like you're good enough and you say something mean to yourself that cuts you down, kill that ant, that automatic negative thoughts, wash it and replace it with something self-supportive. Hey, you're doing great. Let's keep going. Right. And that, man, that changes everything. And that's what I mean when I say like, I'm not in the business on social media of playing the be who other people want me to be game ever. That's not, and it's, it's been real interesting as I've talked about some little bit heated conversations in the last couple years, you know, I've had fingers pointed at me like, Oh, you're just doing this to get likes. I'm like, get likes. I almost lost my whole freaking business over some of the shit I'm talking about. I'm definitely not talking about it to get likes. I know most people don't like what I have to say on some of these topics, but I feel like it's important. It's so important to me that I will speak my truth because I, that's just me. <laughs> and I'm not going to shut down who I am to please other people in a story period, you know? And like that path, dude, the more we can do that, the more we can just be us and speak our truth, the more we attract people like us, right? And I see a huge problem with this, huge, of people are afraid to just be themselves. It's like developmentally, we got stuck in middle school. For real. We've got to evolve out of this as adults. I know it's developmental because I've got a 16 year old, almost 17 year old, and a 14, almost 15 year old, and I watched them go through this in middle school. Watched them. All of a sudden, they went from vibrant little kids that are just them to, oh my gosh, am I cool? Am I popular? Do other people like me? Do I have cool clothes? Ugh. Who am I? It's that whole identity thing and it's developmental and I've been like so big with my kids and I'll pass on to you guys what I've said to my kids I'm like be you all the way because if you stop being you you're gonna find yourself in a group of friends that aren't your friends <laughs> be you all the way and I'm like do you like hanging out with people when they're afraid to be themselves have you been in a group of people who like that one kid they like so shut down that they can't even like be themselves is it easy to connect with that kid do you really even like that kid no, you don't, because you don't even know who the hell they are, right? And that's us as adults. If we don't do the work to evolve out of this, right? Do our internal work, work on our self-image, our self-worth, our self-talk, watch it consciously, be a steward of that, and be like, uh-uh, we're not tolerating that bullshit anymore. We're not saying that kind of stuff to ourselves. We're going to come here and be grown-ass adults and, and nurture ourselves and support ourselves. That's, that is how you get to a place of being authentically you, right? So I see social anxiety all the time. I think that's definitely a big part of a lot of the stuff I'm working with people in the mindset department. And every single time, you know what social anxiety is? I mean, it's, of course, like a lot of it's rooted in childhood patterns of, you know, their parents having certain expectations on them and you have to be like this and you get more love and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, as adults, what they're doing is they're sitting there they're sitting there stuck in their own shit, worried about what every single person is thinking of them so much that they shut down and they can't even be themselves, right? And so if that's you, I really encourage you to like test it out on safe people, like safe people that you feel really good around and just be you all the way. Just be you all the way. Just practice just letting it out, being yourself, you know, and this practice of I'm going to be no matter, I'm going to be me no matter where I am and who I'm talking to and like having my own back and liking who I am, liking, do you like who you are? 
That's a real question for anybody hearing my voice right now. Do you like who you are? And if you don't, why? Did you hear that? Judgment, 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 judgment. Yeah, it's mean, it's abusive, it's self-abuse. We don't need any of that. We have to grow out of this shit, really, truly. It's okay to like see stuff that we want to work on, but it's got to be done in a self-supportive, self-loving energy. When we get to that place, that's when you start being immune from like trying to be this chameleon of who you think everybody wants you to be. That shit sucks. I hope none of us, I hope if you're in that space at all that you are doing the work to come out of it, right? Speak from your heart, lead from your heart. Yeah, you pretended to be somebody else for so long. I know, dude, that shit sucks. Maybe if you don't like yourself, it's because you pretended to be somebody else. Take the freaking mask off and just be you. If you're the goofy kid, be the goofy kid. If you're the nerdy kid, be the nerdy kid. If you, whatever the hell you are, just be you all the way. Practice that over and over and have your own back. Be supportive. And that's when we get to a place where it's like, no, dude, I'm not going to play this game of like being who other people want me to be and I'm going to get crushed to death by every little opinion about me and all that bullshit. Uh, I'll be 40 in, um, what is it, September? I'll be 40 in about a month. I like it. I'm not going to lie. I like getting older. I, I, I feel like it's, um, ain't nobody got time for worrying about all that bullshit anymore, Mo. <laughs> Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> So anyway, just thought I'd share that because I know I feel like sometimes when I talk about this stuff, people think I'm just like being an asshole. And I'm just like, I don't care what anybody thinks. It's just my way or highway. That's not the energy I'm coming in. What I'm trying to say is that I got my own back. I'm willing to take feedback. I love feedback. I beg my friends for it. I'm like, please don't put a filter. Just tell me what you think. Right? And then, and then when they tell me what they think, I'm like, that's interesting. Wow. And I run it through my filter of truth. And then I, I make a decision on how I want to show up with the feedback that I'm getting in my life in my own self-supportive energy. So just want to share that. All right. Going to a friend's birthday party. It's party time. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a good night. Bye.